In this video, I'll show you how to make a self-sustaining terrarium that even has a mini pond. Let's get straight into it. Instead of having it upright like I usually would, I'm going to have this terrarium at an angle. To do this, I'm going to use this piece of wood to hold it up in place. I've already cut a slight angle off the top, which will allow the glass jar to sit into. This holds it at the perfect angle. To attach the glass to the wood, I'm just using some hot glue. I should mention that I did end up adding some super glue to create a stronger bond so it wouldn't roll off. With that done, it's now time to move on and start creating the mini ecosystem. I'm going to start off by adding a drainage layer. For this, I'm using leaker, but you can use pretty much any small rocks or stones. I pour in a generous amount and then flatten it out with my hand. It's probably about three to four centimeters at the deepest point. Now I'm going to use this window screen mesh to create a substrate barrier. After cutting it to size, I placed it inside the terrarium on top of the drainage layer. This will prevent the substrate from getting through down into the drainage layer. A small amount is always going to get through, but it will hold back the majority. With that in place, it's now time to get in the soil mix, or more commonly known as the substrate layer. I'm using my usual terrarium substrate mix, which I'll put up on screen now. I've used it in thousands of terrariums and it hasn't let me down. After pouring in a good amount, I use my hand to carefully pat it down and press it into place. I made it slope up towards the back, which will help create a good sense of depth. I'm now going to dig a small hole into the substrate and I'm going to place inside a small plastic cup which will later become the pond. It doesn't look the best right now and it definitely needs some modifying. I'm going to start by cutting off the top rim to make it a little shorter. This was easy enough with a pair of scissors. I wasn't too happy with where it was originally sitting so I decided to move it a little bit closer to the front. This looks much better so it's time to move on. Now I'm going to do some work to make the pond look a little bit more natural. I'm going to start by taking some sandpaper and roughing up the inside. You'll see why I'm doing this shortly. With the inside roughed up, it's now time to cover it all up. To do this, I'm going to use some super glue and some crushed dried aqua soil. Liquid type super glue will work best for this. I'm going to start by taking the super glue and pouring in a few drops. I then use the stick to spread it out across the inside of the cup. I then pour in some aqua soil and gently press it down into place. I then pour out the excess and this is how it looks. As you can see, it's looking much more natural than it was. I did small sections at a time to make sure that everything was covered. The reason I scratched up the inside of the cup earlier was to allow more surface area for the super glue to hold onto. Here's how the mini pond's looking after it's all been covered and rinsed out with water. It's looking much more natural and can now be placed back inside the terrarium. I placed it inside and patted the substrate down around it to keep it securely in place and make it look quite seamless. Now it's time to move on to the hardscape. I've got these rocks which have these nice horizontal lines which I think will look great inside this build. Like always, I took some time to experiment with a few different layouts and structures. Here's what I ended up with. It's nothing special or difficult, but I think with the addition of moss and plants, it will look great. Talking about plants, let's start getting some inside. I'm going to start with this small Boston fern. I'm going to plant it towards the back behind the rocks. It's definitely going to grow and fill out some space in the back of the scape. With the ferns in, I now want to start planting some moss. For this terrarium, I'm going to use cushion moss. It's a slow growing, vibrant green species of moss that is super easy to grow. With some scissors, I trimmed off the base. This won't hurt the moss at all and simply makes it easier to plant. With some long tweezers, I place it inside and then gently use my fingers to press it down onto the substrate. This will help it wick up moisture from the substrate. I continue the same process for the entire foreground of the terrarium. With the moss in, the mini ecosystem is really starting to come alive. I'm going to use these small rocks to fill in some small gaps around the scape. These also help bring a little bit more texture and detail to the terrarium. The terrarium's looking good, but it's definitely lacking some plants in the background. This is a large species of hydrocotyl, which I think will look great in the back. This is sold as an aquatic plant, but it does grow great inside terrariums too, so long as the humidity is kept high. I love the roundness of its leaves, and it also has some beautiful flowers too. I used some long tweezers to plant it inside, and then chopped off any damaged leaves with some scissors. I used some more cushion moss to fill in any gaps around the scape. Whilst I'm doing this, let me quickly tell you about my terrarium making ebook. If you're new to terrariums and feel a little bit lost and overwhelmed, then this is perfect for you. 
It contains everything you need to know to make and care for long-lasting healthy terrariums. It will definitely give you a head start and you'll avoid some of the unfortunate mistakes that every beginner goes through. It will be at the top of the description and in the pinned comment if you want to check it out. Now let's get back to the build. I'm going to take a few cuttings of this Peperomia verticillata to plant inside the terrarium. It's a red stemmed plant with some beautiful dark green turtle back leaves. I use some scissors to take a fair few cuttings and I'm simply going to plant them up to the first set of leaves. They will send out new roots in no time and will soon start growing. To plant them, I'm simply using some tweezers to push the stem down into the moss. The constant and stable humidity of the terrarium provides the perfect conditions for these plants to root and grow. Next, I'm going to plant a few cuttings of this ficus in the background. With time, this will help fill out some more space and provide a variety of different leaf shapes and textures. Once again, this plant can be planted and grown from stem cuttings. To add some more detail and interest in the foreground, I planted some small cuttings of baby tears. With the plants in, it's now time to move on to the pond. I carefully removed any substrate, moss or plants that have fallen inside. If left in, they'll quickly decay in the water and cause an algae bloom, which is definitely not ideal. Before filling up the pond, I gave the terrarium a light spray down and cleaned off the glass with some tissue. To fill up the pond, I'm going to use this pressurised spray bottle and a long piece of tubing. I place one end on the spray bottle and the other inside the terrarium. I can then spray water into the tube and it will flow down and start slowly filling up the pond. With the pond filled up, the terrarium was looking great but it was definitely missing something. I'm going to take some duckweed out of this nano paludarium to place inside the pond. This tiny plant will quickly grow and cover the surface of the pond which will really help add a miniature sense of scale. I use some long tweezers to carefully place the duckweed inside the pond. Without these tiny little bugs, this definitely won't be a self-sustaining ecosystem. These are springtails and they'll eat any mold or decaying matter inside the terrarium. They'll be working 24 seven to keep the terrarium clean and healthy. The plants will use their poop as fertilizer and in return, they provide sufficient oxygen for them to survive. I then closed the lid and left it to grow for five weeks. Five weeks on and the terrarium couldn't be doing any better. As you can probably tell, a couple weeks in, I added some spiderwood to the hardscape. I felt like it was lacking a little bit of detail and interest. Let me know in the comments if you prefer it with or without the spiderwood. When opening up the terrarium, you can see just how healthy it is. The hydrocotyl has even sent out this beautiful white flower. When looking at the back, you can see that most of the plants have developed a really healthy root system, which is great to see. The duckweed has covered the pond nicely and the baby tears is doing a good job at growing throughout the moss. And the hydrocotyl has sent out these roots, which are slowly creeping down over the rocks. I'm very happy with how this terrarium's doing and I can't wait to see it in a few months time. As this is a sealed terrarium, I won't need to water it or do any maintenance for a good while and it will pretty much take care of itself. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Check out this video for another terrarium build.